Yo, Elliot, I noticed that when I'm addicted to pretty much anything, even if it's drugs and alcohol, my competitive spirit and drive in life goes down. I'm going to be starting a sales job soon. Currently, I do marketing for my store. I want to also master jujitsu and MMA. Do you have any advice on getting in the groove, so to speak, and turning my addictive personality on in these success categories? Thank you. So the first thing I want to just quote, kind of like throw out there is that when we get addicted to substances like drugs and alcohol, I'll even throw video games and porn in there. These are things that give us an immediate return on our investment, right? So for example, say you uh, sniff a, what would he say? Snort, snort a bump of cocaine, <laughs> something I've never done before in my life. But I know that when that guy takes that, instantly he's thrown into a new world. Whoa. Drinking alcohol is another, another one, right? You fill up a tall glass of, of vodka, whatever. After a couple sips, right? You suck that sucker down. You're starting to get that little high, right? You turn on porn. It ain't long before you get an orgasm. You're playing video games and you're blowing shit up. You're boxing people out. You're, com you're committing all these, well, imaginary actions, but you're getting, you're getting a high. You get a high, right? Highs are what, what we become addicted to. We don't become addicted to drugs, alcohol, any of these things. We get addicted to the feeling of winning, right? Even with, That's why I've said before, I remember when I used to smoke weed that I had this sense of pride. It was weird. It was, like a, it was, a, it was a subtle sense of pride. And when I first take that first hit, right, take that first hit and I go, everything's going to be okay, right? It's the high that we're after that gives us this sense of pride, this sense that something's been accomplished, right? I'm drunk. I'm, it's an accomplishment. I blew up that guy. It's an accomplishment. I watched this video game or I watched this pornography and I blew my load. There's a sense of accomplishment. Now, it's an empty sense of accomplishment because at the end, you actually take a few steps back. But in the immediate, it feels fucking great. Right. And this is a part of the reason why we become addicted, because men want an end to things. Men want an outcome for things. Men, in a way, are programmed to get results. And if I'm doing something and I'm not getting a result, then I'm not going to get a high. Now, let me back up and say you're not going to get an immediate high. Drugs, alcohol, porn, women, video games give you an immediate high. Right. So there's something there's something in there to be honored. There's something in there that is useful. There's something in there that if uh, if turned on in a resourceful way can help you become a successful man. I am I have an addicted personality. I like immediate results. I like dopamine hits. And I'll tell you, I was able to turn that addictiveness into something positive when I started making YouTube videos, I'm just going to give you my story because I know yours is about how do I turn this, uh, this sense of addiction and I'm not going to call it addiction. I'm going to, I'm going to reframe it. I'm going to call it this, this sense of accomplishment, be it short term or long term. It's all an accomplishment. When I started making YouTube videos, of course I had the long term in mind, right? I'm working. Let me, I'm just saying YouTube videos because was my work. I have the long term in mind. I have, the ultimate goals that I had set for myself. But what kept me so focused so long, you know, I, I made YouTube videos consistently for, for uh, about seven years before I reached a million subscribers, was the immediate ROI, right? I was getting an immediate ROI. And social media does that. That's another one. Social media does that. It gives you an immediate ROI. You put up a video, or I put up a video, and it's like, you know, within 24 hours, 10,000 people liked it 10,000 people watched it or shared it or commented maybe a hundred thousand people so I'm doing something and it's almost like I'm getting immediate feedback back in the day when I first started making YouTube videos I knew that there was something a little off about it I grew up without social media and I grew up mostly reading books right I didn't get my information online like I do now and I remember reading Ralph Waldo Emerson and uh, I really enjoyed his books, his stories, and his life. And he was a speaker. He made YouTube videos, but it wasn't YouTube, <laughs> right? He made YouTube videos. In essence, he would give speeches and turn them into essays. 
And so his word really wouldn't reach the masses for many, many, many months, maybe even years after he produced it so that there was a gap between activity and the, 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 the fruits of that activity, the reaction of that activity or the response from that activity, the goal itself, what we're, what we're aiming for, that hit. It took him a long time, right? Life was a lot slower back then. Now we want immediate hits for everything, right? Especially since we got the gadgets in our phones. Immediate hits, boom, boom, even scrolling. Even scrolling, you know why we get addicted to scrolling on Instagram or TikTok and stuff like that? Because it gives us immediate hits. It gives us immediate sense of accomplishment, though false accomplishment. So the reason why I tell you this is because I encourage you to reframe the idea that your addictiveness is somehow a blight. It's only a blight if it's used the wrong way, just like a gun, right? There's, guns don't kill people. Guns can save you. Guns can build nations. Guns can do great things. But if it's in the hands of the wrong person, if it's used improperly, it can cause chaos. This striving for a sense of accomplishment can be tapered. It can, let me put it this way. It can be harnessed is better, right? Like a horse, right? Like a wild horse, right? That horse is, everybody's amazed by a wild stallion galloping. And like, if you just see him galloping and, and acting crazy, it's like, wow, look at that wild stallion. It's a lot of power, a lot of power in that horse. Or I think about my dogs. My dogs are, I got Malinois. They have a lot of energy. They're very powerful. But until that jockey sits on that horse or until the trainer comes, and works with his, with his dog, all that energy is spilling out all over the place and it's not actually accomplishing anything. You gotta rein in that power, rein in that horse, they say. My dad used to train horses, and he'd say, you gotta break that horse. And for us as men, in a way, we have to break our inner beast. We gotta break that effeminate beast on the inside. When I say effeminate, I'm not saying feminine. When I say effeminate, I mean seeking pleasure, that pleasure-seeking side of us. And if we can put some reins on that and steer it properly and be patient with the outcome, we could, turn, we could turn the world inside out. We can create beautiful things, amazing things. You, my man, are getting into a sales job. There's no greater high. I will tell you this, man, there's, there's an amazing high when you close a sale. Because you've been working towards it, you've been thinking about it, you've been doing all the right things, and once that one person says yes and they sign on the dotted line, that is a high. You get your, you meet your quota, right? You might have sales quotas and you got to knock down like five a day, whatever it is. You know that your income is increasing. You know that your life is advancing. You know that... Things are moving up for you. There's, you know, there could be a hangover. There's a hangover with every high. But in other words, you're not addicted to something that's destroying you as quickly as it gives you a high, right? Like drugs and alcohol. So for you, turning that, you know, conspir that, that you say I have a, cons a, a competitive spirit and drive, but it goes down when I turn towards drugs and alcohol or anything else that I get addicted to because it's hijacking. Drugs and alcohol, video games and porn, hijack your competitive edge because you have this false sense of accomplishment not consciously but subconsciously there's a false sense of accomplishment so if i'm getting high every day there's no need for me to accomplish anything else because i accomplished my goal today by getting high the mechanism is neutral it's where it's turned and so a lot of times what we have to do is we have to ask ourselves is the short term benefit of using this drug, drinking this alcohol, doing this thing, playing this game, going to move me forward in my life or move me backwards in my life. And if it's going to move you backwards, then you allow it to start to recede in your life, doing less and less of it. But then taking that newfound, now there's a gap, I'm telling you right now, because if you're an addict, it's tough to just jump right into something new, right? Because that you're gonna miss the old high. And this, this comes in every form, not just with drugs and alcohol. It even came with me when I was making those YouTube videos and I became like a golden boy on YouTube that everybody loved, right? I had a high, right? I got a high from it. Well, as my life goes on and as your life goes on, those things that give you highs start to actually, you know, can in turn, turn you down. And it was starting to turn me down. It just mean that I needed to, needed to upgrade in my life and do something new. 
And so you're getting a chance to upgrade in your life and do something new by focusing in on this sales job and in your jujitsu training, right? Here's, I'll leave you with this. You got to get wins under your belt. You got to get sales under your belt. You got to get jujitsu matches under your belt. You got to get wins because there's a high to winning. Winning is addictive too, but it's a much better addiction than being a drunk loser, right? Both ways is an addiction. And I'm, I keep going back and forth because I'm interchanging that word addiction, right? Addiction to outcome orientation. It's an outcome orientation. Focus on the outcome of winning. This is how I became addicted, addicted to weightlifting. I had outcome orientation. I realized, wow, I can only bench press 135 pounds this month. Wow, three months later, I'm bench pressing 185 pounds, right? There's a win. There's a win. There's progress. And if you keep your eye on the prize, right, the, you have to have your eye on a prize. What is the prize in your sales job? Well, the short-term prize is making a sale, but the long-term prize may be I want to buy a new house, I want to marry my spouse, I want to have a family, I want to grow in my life. And this is a means to helping me get there. But it's tough because you only have you only have so much energy, right? Imagine a pie chart. You only have so much energy. And if if half of that chart is going towards false wins, fake wins, right? Like pornography and jerking off is a fake win. You, you didn't actually you didn't actually do anything, <laughs> right? You didn't actually accomplish anything. Getting drunk with alcohol, it's a fake win. You didn't actually accomplish anything, anything worthwhile. Winning that jujitsu match, ah. Now you're taking the same attitude and you're turning towards something resourceful. Getting that sale. So my man, I would invite you to, as I even alluded to, allow these other things to recede in your life but immediately begin to replace them with real wins, bro. Get that sale. Be addicted to winning those sales. Be addicted to winning those matches. And by and by, you're no longer going to crave any of those other things because you're such a winner in your life. Why would you want that setback? So that's it, man. I think a lot of guys can really relate to that addictive personality. You know, they call it addictive personality. I'll even go so far as to say that it's, it's hyper-masculine behavior. Right? When I say hypermasculine, I'm not talking about like super macho. I'm talking about super extroversion and outcome orientation. That's what men are. Men are extrovert. We build our lives out there. Women build on the inside. Right? Like I talked about with yin and yang before. Men build out there. Who creates sk skyscrapers? Who creates airplanes? Who creates all the technology that we're using this day? Who builds cities? Who builds empires? Who are the world builders? Men. It's always men. Now, today, of course, you know, they let women do stuff. But who built everything? Men, because our job is to build out there and have outcome orientation there. And so it's, that's why I use the term hypermasculine. Too focused, too much out there, right? Receptive, building on the inside, feminine. And so, I'm starting to talk in circles here. Wanted to wrap things up for you. Take that same attitude, that same uh, hypermasculine outcome orientation, but turn it towards something productive and turn away from that which is effeminate i hope that helps you dude done yo it's your bro elliot i hope you enjoyed that video if you did you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent king transformation classes with my students where among other things we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business and with women if that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.